For our first installment, we caught up with the one and only Rexy at the Bay Area Book Festival in downtown Berkeley. My name is the one and only Rexy. I use she, her pronouns. I'm here with Drag Queen Story Hour to read some fun books about acceptance and joy. So I had the privilege of on- and honor of reading this uh, amazing book, uh, No One Owns the Colors by Gianna Duffy. Um, this book, I personally gravitated towards it because it talks about nature and the colors that are all around us. Um, and it really represents, in, to me, the gender spectrum, the spectrum of identity, and that there's no right or wrong way of doing colors, right? There's always a new color, there's shades of oranges, there's shades of ruby, and that really speaks to us as individuals that we don't have to be one specific kind of person. We can be anyone we want and have different variations and take hues of blue and hues and pink and create something magical and something unique. <laughs> no one owns the colors by Gianna Davi. There's, it's so colorful, just like my closet. If pink is for girls, then it's also for squirrels because no one owns the colors. They say blue is for boys. Well, that just annoys because no one owns the colors. If trees can be seen dressed in red, gold, and green, then I'll wear chartreuse. See? Chartreuse is my favorite color. And please don't be mean because all nature hues are on the same team and no one owns the colors. If sunsets go changing their outfits each night from violet, peach, turquoise all glowing with light, then I can wear butterscotch or scarlet even. I'll copy the trees and I'll change with the seasons. For colors exist everywhere, every day. No one can say just for us while they play or assign them to right or wrong tones, good or bad. If anyone tells you other than that, ask them. Do ocean waves argue with the sky over blue? Do chameleons have only one color to use? Does red avoid yellow and try not to touch? Or do they unite to make neon orange crush? All creatures on Earth are their own special shade. Each fur tone and skin tone is uniquely made. From ginger to tawny to apricot pie, the shades of our clothes are skin of our eyes. From redwood to emerald to mocha to blue, there are colors we're made of and colors we choose. So what is the name of the color of you? And what does it feel like? Bold, shy, brand new? Now, if somebody tells you your color is wrong, be it skin, favorite crayon, or your fuchsia so wrong, smile back at that person politely and say, the trees and the frogs and the cool ocean spray, they all share their colors, the dark ones and light, and so do the rainbows that dress the sky bright. So all of those colors I also can wear, I am naturally perfect in all of my flair. For all of those colors, I also can be. If you look with your heart, then I think you will see that the colors of me and the colors of you all come from the same glowing planet. It's true. And whether the color is olive or jet, cobalt or licorice, moth or violet, Indigo, marigold, teal, or bright white, whether they fill you with joy, then they'll always be right. Silver and charcoal, magenta or bronze, when the colors are part of us, they are never wrong. We're all part of nature. It's how we unite, and nature is dressed in the best colored light. The colors of sunsets and squirrels and trees The colors of seasons and shimmering seas. The colors of you and the colors of me 
just like rainbows, are truly and naturally free because no one owns the colors. And that's that book. Did we like them? Tell me what a typical uh, drag story hour is like. You know, it's interesting because I don't think that there is a typical uh, story hour in a day of our lives. Everything is so unique from being in- invited to schools by educators to being in a public library to sometimes we're in parks um, and just let kids come to us so that we can read to them. My favorite moment of my first drag queen story hour that I ever did was at a school in the Mission of San Francisco, in the Mission neighborhood in San Francisco. And it's somewhere where I grew up. I got to tell stories in Spanish. And I had a kid just come up to me and just look at my makeup and just pluck my eyelash off. And I thought it was the most hilarious thing. And it showed, like, the, like, freeness of kids to just explore, um, So there's really not a typical day in the life of a drag queen who does story hours, but that's the beauty of it. What what are you passionate about now as far as activism goes? Um, Right now, I am actually very honored and privileged to be a co-owner and a co-founder of the world's first all-trans-owned coffee cooperative. We are based in the Tenderloin of San Francisco, where the movement began over 60 years ago. Um, It's called Fluid Co-op. Um, We, as an all-chance-run cooperative, have focused on sharing our stories through our beverages and creating a space where all individuals can feel welcome. Our goal really is to provide a space where anyone, regardless of gender, race, even financial um, ability, can come in and enjoy peace and quiet or some music, and just be in community. What inspired you to write this book? So many things. Honestly, um, I, I'm a mother of two sons, and I just, uh, as I raised them in the world, they're seven and ten now, it just became so much more apparent to me how gendered um, we expect the world of kids in particular to be and how much uh, gender expectations there are on them. And I heard so many times in preschool kids saying, you know, pink is for girls and blue is for boys and you can't like that color or just the expectation of like the rambunctious boy, quote unquote, energy. And it just really bothered me. To be honest, the very current politics around drag story hour and drag queens in general was not really a thing when I wrote the book two years ago because it takes a while to publish a book so I feel like it is this sort of kismet that it came out right at this time and I'm I'm thrilled that it's out there and that it's that it's getting out there Um, and I fully support drag queens and the trans community and LGBTQ plus everything I like let's help let's help like protect and 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 support so you have a series of children's books, and some of them are specifically, um, I don't know, breaking down stereotypes. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think they're breaking down stereotypes, uh, dealing with issues of gender and love and acceptance and joy and expression. Can you name some specific titles? One was No One Owns the Colors. Um, and I think the wonderful thing about that is truly looking at nature, right? Comparing the fact that you don't own the color blue from the sky. And so why are we assigning blue to a certain gender uh, is sort of silly. And I think that we can laugh at ourselves when we read this book. I think the magic about a children's book is that an adult learns something as well, not just the kid. So when I got that manuscript, it was like, wow, that is so true. Like pink should not be for girls because squirrels don't own pink right in nature uh they don't own a flower and so i think that that was sort of the crux of publishing that book and uh, i love it 